parenting advice, what you say matters. In this video about parenting advice regarding language learning, I want to share with you 10 powerful tips that will help you support your multilingual children on a deeper level and to use the time that you have wisely and get better results. Words are so powerful. Once you realize that, you can start using language intentionally and that will give you power and control. In this case, it will help you lead your kids more easily in the direction that you desire. It's like Paul Watzlawick once said, one cannot not communicate, which means that as soon as humans perceive each other, they start communicating through spoken language and through body language. This happens inevitably, whether we are aware of it or not. The other day a friend was telling me a funny story with her four-year-old daughter. They were eating lunch and the girl wanted to tell her what she had been playing because she had food in her mouth. And the mother told her, empty your mouth before you speak. So the next thing that happened is that the girl spit everything out and continued talking. At that moment the mother realized that she hadn't communicated clearly. What she should have said instead is swallow the food before you speak, right? So this is an example of how children can misunderstand what you mean if you are not careful enough when giving them instructions. Often it's not that the kids want to be naughty or are naughty, it's just that they take what you say literally. This is important to know because it can save you lots of headaches. Therefore, a powerful communication tool to remember is to communicate clearly. I know it sounds ridiculously simple, but don't underestimate the power of clarity, particularly when dealing with multilingual children. As a parent, as teachers, and even as leaders, you constantly need to show your children, your students, your employees, in what direction the ship is sailing, right? So how can you make sure that people follow you instead of going against you? Buckle up because here come the 10 very practical communication tips that I'm sure will be very helpful for your multilingual families. And hey, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more good advice. Tip number one, avoid using don't. Don't think about a flying cow. What picture did you just see in your head? Exactly, that of a flying cow. Our brains are just too fast at picturing words, so what happens is that kids tend to overhear the word don't, even more often than grown-ups do, because this process is often still too complicated for them. That means that when you use the word don't, they end up doing exactly what you didn't want them to do in the first place. So instead of saying, don't touch the vase, a better way to formulate this instruction would be just, just watch, just watch. Instead of saying, don't go too fast, you could say go slowly. Instead of saying don't climb up the tree, you could say watch where you put your foot. In other words, try to say exactly what you wish them to do, not what you don't want. Now this is not so easy, I catch myself saying don't, don't, don't again and again, but being aware of it helps so that you know how to formulate your instructions when a situation pops up where you really need your child to follow your instructions. Tip number two, kind words. Every word matters and every word you utter has an impact on your kids, brains and souls. So positive, beautiful words make children stronger, ugly, negative words weaker. Studies show that verbal attacks are as harmful as physical attacks. That means that the brains don't differentiate between mental and physical injuries. Phrases like, you can't do anything, or you are dumb, or you are a crybaby affect kids deeply. Ridiculing them in front of people can have lasting and devastating results. That's why you should do everything in your power to protect your kids from being mocked when using a language. On the other hand, you can trigger a lot of positive behavior in your kids by using kind and empowering words like well done or uh, you put a lot of effort into that, wonderful, or you're smart, you're strong. I personally love using empowering words with my kids and my students because I see the powerful effect they have on them. It's like putting nutrients into their bodies and minds. They grow particularly strong through positive but honest reinforcement. 
Hi there, for all of you that don't know me yet, my name is Andrea, I'm a teacher with a passion for languages. Subscribe to this channel and my mailing list to get support on how to raise your multilingual children successfully. Check the description box below. Tip number three. Avoid labeling. Kids internalize very easily the labels that their parents or other important people in their lives give them. It's often very hard to get rid of those labels once they are planted in their brains. So because kids love their parents, they want to be accepted by them and will do anything to fit in. Even if you say something as a joke, kids often don't understand that that is a joke and believe everything you say, internalizing your words and starting acting according to the label that you give them. So for, for example, if you say, you are a princess, don't be surprised if your girl starts acting like one. If you say, you are slow, your child will become probably even slower. If you say, you are dumb, it can have a dramatic impact on your child's life because kids don't want to disappoint their parents or teachers. They just want to be loved and accepted. The technical terminology of this is called self-fulfilling prophecy. It's basically a social psychological phenomenon of someone predicting or expecting something and this prediction or expectation coming true simply because the person believes it will and the person's resulting behavior in aligned to fulfill the belief. This suggests that people's beliefs influence their actions. So, tip number four, rhetorical questions. We grown-ups like to use rhetorical questions to ask for something politely. For example, you say, could you please open the door for me? We would be completely surprised if a person would reply with a no, right? because what we actually mean is please open the door. The problem is that kids usually don't notice yet the difference between a rhetorical and a normal question. So communicating like this can get you into trouble. For example, when I see parents picking up their kids from preschool, they sometimes ask their kids, can you put on your jacket now? We need to go. And the child then replies with a no. And then the parents are stuck in a very uncomfortable situation because they start a power struggle with their kids. By formulating their wishes with a rhetorical questions, they are allowing the children to answer with a yes or a no. Obviously they don't expect a no, but the kids don't realize yet that a no is actually not an option here. So to avoid these situations, it's much better to communicate clearly using the imperative. Like, please put on your jacket, we need to go now, period. Tip number five, no is an exception. Don't go there, don't touch that, no that's not for you, no here, no there, no that. When adults use their word no too often, what happens is that the word no loses its power. It has been overused and in the end no doesn't mean anything. To the child anymore. Besides, what's even worse is that a constant no doesn't allow a child to explore the world. So the power tip here is use no only in exceptional situations. Use it mindfully, willingly, consciously and when you decide to say no, mean it. If the child doesn't listen, there must be a consequence, otherwise the word no has no purpose and won't have the wanted effect. The kids learn not to take you seriously anymore, hence they stop listening to you. Tip number six, eye contact. Some kids need this more than others, but if you have something important to say to your kids, go down on your knees to be able to be on eye level with them. Ask them to look at you and say what you need to say slowly and very clearly. If needed, ask them even to repeat after you. For example, I would say to my daughter, Laia, listen to me and look at me. When the sidewalk ends, I want you to stop and wait for me to cross the road. Can you repeat that for me? And then she would do that. Then I would know she got it. Tip number seven, congruency. As I mentioned before, it is impossible not to communicate. Even if you don't say anything, you are communicating something. So bear this in mind when talking to your kids. Your voice and your body language must be congruent to send a clear message to your child. So for example, if you don't like something that your child is doing or saying, 
smiling while saying stop that, please stop it and laughing will send the wrong message. The child won't stop with the unwanted behavior. Instead, you should say stop that with a firm and strong voice tone and looking at your child with penetrating eyes and a serious facial expression. My teaching partner, for example, is very good at changing quickly his posture and his voice tone when the kids are being naughty. It works so well. I'm always surprised at how well he can do that. Kids freeze in that moment and you can tell that they know that they were out of line. This also means that when you are praising your kids for having done something well, in other words, when using positive verbal reinforcement, your eyes should shine, your voice should have a friendly sound, and a smile wouldn't be bad either. All of this will bring lots of clarity for your children, and they will learn that you really mean what you say. Tip number eight, pre-warn. Young kids need still, in many situations, help from their parents, help crossing the road, help with getting dressed, help to come up and sit at the table, etc. One of the best tips I've found over the years to avoid tantrums is to always pre-warn the children what's about to happen because that gives them security. For example, I tell my children, we need to go soon. You can slide three more times and then we leave. Sometimes they are like, oh no, please, we want to slide down five times. And then I say, okay, then five times, but that's it. After that little conversation, we can leave without tantrums because we made a deal and I listened to their desires as well and involved them in the process. They love that, kids love to be involved. It's a little bit like when going to the doctor. They often pre-warn their patients. I'm going to clean this area now and we're gonna put some alcohol. Now you're gonna feel a little, a little stitch. Now I'm going to move your arm over and press a little. They probably do that to calm the patients and avoid surprising or scaring them. It's the same thing with kids. They are little beings, not things that can be moved around as wished. And it helps them to know what is coming in advance. Besides, explaining what is going to happen next has a wonderful side effect for multilingual families. It gives your children more language exposure. Tip number nine, explanations. This is not always easy because it requires patience, but explaining the world to kids with the words because pays off well. For example, instead of just saying, that is the last chocolate you are eating today. You are not allowed to eat anymore. It makes sense to, at some point, explain to them why you don't want them to eat so much chocolate. What does sugar do to your body, to your health, to your teeth? And, and because you love them so much, you want to protect them from that. Kids are much more likely to cooperate when they know the reasons behind your decisions. And this again is a wonderful opportunity to expose your children to rich vocabulary and a great variety of phrases. Tip number 10, avoid nasty remarks. Be very careful when speaking in front of your children about them or other people. Even toddlers pick up everything you say. They will copy your attitude, your words, your nasty remarks. You are a role model and that is powerful. So my friends, I hope you liked my 10 parenting tips about watching out what you say. Thanks for watching, scroll down and leave me a comment, like and subscribe, have a wonderful week and talk to you soon.